Hey, so today uh, what I wanted to look at is um, object storage and um, jails in TrueNAS, um, sort of how to use them, how to get started with them, um, and sort of what we can do to uh, make better use of MV, uh, manage S3 object storage in TrueNAS a little bit more flexibly. So to get started, um, I did a couple of tutorials uh, earlier in the series. Um, uh, on MinIO, uh, the S3 object storage, um, how to pair that with Nextcloud, um, and also like a brief look at sort of like the interface and how to get started with it uh, using Docker and Linux containers. Um, what's interesting is that TrueNAS, um, even TrueNAS Core, which is based on FreeBSD, so it doesn't have native container support, but it does have something called jails. Um, so uh, first, before we go down the jails route, I'll just show how to set it up using the TrueNAS services. So out of the box, TrueNAS um, does have S3 object store support. Uh, it is using a version of MinIO uh, to enable this. Um, and it's pretty straightforward to set up. So here you can see I already have the service enabled. Um, you click on the pencil, the edit button, and you can set, uh, by default, it'll do IP address 0.0.0.0, .0 which is a wild card, meaning uh, it could, it serves it up at pretty much any IP address that you want. Um, if your TrueNAS had multiple uh, interfaces, you could maybe bind one of those. Um, in, in this case, in this demo, we don't have that, so we're going to leave all the defaults. The data port is port 9000. That's also the default port for all data from uh, all versions of MinIO that I know of. Um, it can be changed, but uh, by default on almost all versions of MinIO, the, um, the data transmission happens over port 9000. Uh, port uh, 9001, that's the console port. Um, so this uh, can vary. Um, I think the latest versions of MinIO, it actually randomizes that um, just to avoid, uh, for, for privacy sake. Um, but the console port uh, can also be bound to a specific port, and that's what uh, TrueNAS gives you the option to do here. So by default, it's going to come in at 9001. Uh, you can set the access keys. So um, here you can uh, very easily change, like, uh, basically you can think of the access key and secret key as like username password uh, when logging in. And then you point it basically at whatever data set that you want. So I created a data set here. It's called S3DS1. Um, and then we're going to enable the browser, which means we enable the console. Okay. So uh, this is basically all you need to do to set it up. Once it's set up, you can log in. Uh, Log out first, log back in. So you can see we have three buckets. Um, what our uses is, you have a very uh, nice overview here. You can see what the access is uh, for all of these. Um, you can change the permissions. So if we wanted to make this a public bucket or a private bucket, um, basically who can access, you can change that here. Um, but you can go in and create uh, as many buckets as you want. You can browse them. You, know, you can upload files. So you can upload a file like that. And then the file is available over here. And we have some basic information we can preview. Okay. So that's the, that's the basic uh, service. Now, one thing. Um, You'll notice is that uh, in these options, there's no way to set like different users who can log in, who can view what buckets, things like that. Um, that's also there is the ability to add users, but the user uh, management for here, there's no like way to like filter exactly what uh, buckets they're allowed to do. You can only have kind of um, basic read, read, write, read only. Um, so if a user was going to be able to log into this console. Uh, they would essentially be able to see pretty much everything, uh, which may not be desirable. So there's a couple of ways uh, in which we could restrict this or sort of silo this off a little bit better, um, and it involves use of jails. So one way we can do this is we could um, have sort of like a front end, uh, a web front end, okay? We could have something like this, okay? So this is a web front end your S3 objects, and then it's pointed at a very specific bucket. Um, it has the uh, credentials or an access key 
to go in and uh, view the contents, but it's only hard-coded to a specific bucket. From here, the user can upload, um, let me see, take a screenshot. Uh, can upload uh, their images, their files, um, and then they can interact uh, with all of these um, over here. And if they want to view, they can just download again. Uh, and then this is going to follow whatever the default policy is for accessing a file um, based on your web browser settings. So by default in Firefox that I'm using here, if I click uh, on a direct link to this image, it wants to save the file. So I can say OK. I'll save the file somewhere else. It'll save, and if I were to view in the folder, I can indeed see the file. Okay. Now, what we can uh, also do is, um, in addition to building this uh, web front end, and the source code over here is on my GitHub page. Um, so uh, anyone who wants to copy this is just like a reference. Um, it's just a very basic. Uh, sort of proof of concept how to get started and work with with this. Um, and we have uh, all the information here of like where you would change it. So you basically, you would change the endpoint to whatever the IP address is. Um, and you would change the credentials to the specific credentials of your uh, S3 or your MinIO instance. Or you know, this could even, um, if it was a cloud a cloud instance, you could change it to a cloud instance as well. And then you specify exactly what bucket um, you want to point this at. So right now we're looking at the bucket, which is over here. So it's this S3 GL01. And if we go into this web server that I have, um, and we look at this, go to the user local triple W Apache data, and if we cat out the header file, you can see that we have all of the endpoints, which is pointed to this instance of the MinIO. Um, we have the keys over here, and then it's specified at this exact S3 GL01 bucket. So we can see here, if we browse, uh, browse, browse, browse. If we browse the bucket, we have these four files. These are indeed the same four files that we see here. Okay, so this just acts as an endpoint. And essentially, what you could do is a couple of things: um, is you could have this hosted in like uh, different subfile folders. So you could have like um, this website, but then everyone's hard coded, so you have a different user. So you could have, um, say, for example, different folders in the uh, web server. Uh, each user has their own folder, and uh, each one is accessing a different bucket or a different service. Um, so you could si siphon off like who sees what data uh, hard coded in like this web front end so that other people wouldn't be able to see uh, other people's um, stuff. And then maybe if you went a step further from uh, this sort of POC, you could have like different login credentials maybe per uh, web server or per site essentially. Like you could have. Um, something, uh, some very simple code to sort of restrict the login and restrict the access um, for those individuals. Um, the other way that you could do it, rather than sort of creating a separate front end and breaking it out bucket by bucket, is you could also just break out the services. So what we're going to look at over here is this is an S3 GL1. Um, this is this instance over here. So we can see the IP address this uh, 192.168.122.120, okay? And this is the same IP address as this jail. Now, each jail in uh, FreeBSD and indeed in TrueNAS, uh, TrueNAS Core, is going to have um, its own IP address. So each one of these jails is operating as a separate instance, uh, very similar to a VM. Um, uh, and actually, uh, for Linux containers, uh, the same principle applies, although usually um, in practice, they don't end up having the same uh, IP address on the same uh, network. So this is something which is, um, I think, a little bit easier to do um, with jails. Um, you can just assign them, and when you build them, just give them a, point them at a, DH, a DHCP, 
and then they can get like an individual IP address and then you can build up the jail uh, just by building in the packages. So in this instance, in this uh, S3 jail one, we have um, everything up and running with its own uh, host of MinIO. And essentially what you could do um, is uh, go through and uh, using different jails, each jail is its own MinIO instance and therefore you could break out like user permissions or user credentials pretty easily um, just by having uh, different jails. So like a user comes in, they're accessing their file objects, uh, but they're in their own uh, siloed off instance and you could have as many jails uh, running as you want. Um, it doesn't really create a lot of load on the system you see them like around 2% average, like you're not going to notice it. It depends on really what's happening inside each jail. Um, but the jails themselves are not going to inherently take up a lot uh, more additional compute resources. Um, and then we have this S3 jail one, and then we have this test jail. So this test jail is another jail that I just created. Now this one also has MinIO. Uh, we're going to CD to a mount folder. We have a MinIO data. Um, this could be really any directory you want. Um, we can make uh, minio2 and then if we wanted to run the service we just run minio server uh, minio2 and then it starts and then this one is pointed at this uh, 192.168.122.244 so that's the IP address of this specific jail. Okay so this is running separate to the other one if we go to the console, which is over here, we can also log in. And you can see it's, it's completely separate um, from this jail uh, over here. So everything is completely siloed off and we can create a new bucket. We'll just say maybe S3 jail 02, create bucket. And then from here, uh, the users have sort of their own uh, permission, their own uh, web GUI, and their own sort of interface. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing this on a large scale. I think on large scale, you're probably better off using a web front end, something similar to this, which is like a proof of concept. Or you could do something um, even more powerful, which would be pointing each one of these uh, individual buckets at, say, like a Nextcloud instance or something. So everyone has their own. Uh, web web interface and their own storage and the storage is all completely separately managed. Um, I also wanted to just look very quickly at where jails go. So uh, jails, when you create them, they each get their own data set. Um, this is all managed uh, under IOCage. So IOCage is kind of like the jail management um, uh, framework for all of these uh, individual jails. But if you look down in here in the jails, you can see each jail that we created, the LAMP, the S3 jail one, this test jail, each one of them is their own data set. Inside the data set, uh, all of these can then be uh, snapshotted. You can replicate them. You can do um, all the things that you would normally want to do with TrueNAS. Um, just as normal. So we, we can create like these snapshots and things uh, on the fly, and then we can replicate these just as we would any other data set uh, in ZFS. And then um, everything can be backed up and managed just as you would uh, your standard file system. So that's um, most of what I wanted to cover. Uh, I will put uh, more detailed information in the blog post, uh, as well as links to the source code for the files and also getting started with um, how to set up the MinIO uh, inside the jail, as well as how to set up the, um, the LAMP stack with the AWS PHP plugin um, inside of uh, FreeBSD jail. Uh, there's a couple of gotchas. Um, so hopefully uh, by reading through some of the blog and the information, if anyone's interested, um, it'll take out some of the guesswork about how to do that. So that's all for this video. And as always, thank you very much.